heard that in a minute. I ain't opened up with that in a minute. I ain't did this right here in a long time. I'm just saying. I miss it. I miss doing this right here. Up here. Up in here. You see what I'm saying? Hey. 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 I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Wait. something <clears throat> i am ready for the world's largest who guessed okay so there you notice i came in the show different today i did not do an opener i usually kind of give you guys a little teaser as to who it is not gonna do that i need you to guess who this person is now let me give you some hints all right latoya hello baby i'm gonna give some hints um it's a man um He's a black man. I would say he's probably about six one. Um, he's shy. And he is married. If y'all can't guess that, I, <laughs> man and black, yeah, he's right. And I and I, I'm sure Ildris Elba. Y'all think I would be. Okay, you know it ain't Ildris. <sighs> Y'all give up? Okay, fine. Hey, Yolanda. All right, who do I have the pleasure of speaking with this morning? Sir, you can go ahead and let yourself... Compl oh, they want complexion. Um, He's light-skinned it. You have to put it too easy. Myron? Myron is dark-skinned. Pete Frazier. Pete, Pete is dark-skinned. Pete is very dark skin. You know it's not him. Buffering? Who's buffering? Nobody should be buffering. Give me thumbs up if you're good. Because we should not be buffering. I'm going to have a problem if we're buffering. I'm just... Doc. Oh, Dockery. Mm-mm. He can't come back on him. Mm-mm. Doc can't come back on him. Um, You good on your end? Give me thumbs up if you're not buffering. Uh, One of my producers said they are buffering. Some of y'all got some inside knowledge. Go ahead and let these folks know who you are. Go ahead, sir. Okay. 
Is it on me? It is on you. <laughs> oh, let me take you up. Make sure I can see right. Okay. This is uh, this is Keith Pratt. What's up? Well, I had like three people that guessed it, but I think you may have called and told them that you were coming on today is what I'm saying. I don't know. No, man. I ain't told nobody. I want to see. Where can I? I want to see it. I can see you on your page. Where, in the, where else is it being broadcast? It is being broadcast on Facebook Live on my page. Now, hold up now. Okay. You can't look at yourself. And be in the interview at the same time. I don't think you can do that on the same device. Now, you may be able I'm to... I'm looking at you. <laughs> Correct. That's the thing. All right. So, they, some people say they are buffering. Is everybody good? Are we thumbs up on the buffering? We should not be buffering. So, before we even get started, I did all this. I don't want to have to do all that again. Is what I'm saying. Hey, hey, I'm just saying. I can, but I don't want to have to. All right. Everybody good? All right. So, we're good. They say we're good. All right. So, it is T. Pratt. I have the pleasure of speaking to the one and only T. Pratt. Now, T. Pratt, you will not see him uh, on the screen. You won't see him. We, we got rid of that. We're just going to do it auto. We're just going to do his voice. That's it. This is one of those. Let me tell you about my Saturday today. This is a stress-free Saturday. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm not doing stress today. What are you doing today, T. Pratt? I'm running errands today. Mm. I think I'm going to stop by Johnny Davis's class and dance for a couple hours, run a few errands, and then hang out with my wife when she gets off the plane. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> How long have you been married? I have been married it, uh, October 1st. It'll be one year. Already? I'm headed toward my anniversary, my first anniversary. Oh, that's so cute. Congratulations. Y'all show some love. <laughs> To Mr. T. Pratt, he's working up on a year. So you, you know, at a year you're still in love. I'm just saying. Not that I don't love you, no. I'm just saying. <laughs> that didn't come out right. Oh, oh, that didn't come out right. I'm so sorry. Mm. Oh my God, I supposed to have my choker on. I forgot to put my choker. Let me just go ahead and give a shout out to my sugar babies. Hey, sugar babies, it's here. Here it goes. Here it goes. All right, all right. So you're coming up on a year. How has married life treated you thus far? Uh, I've been, you know, marriage life has been great. Um, I, I never wanted to get married, so I didn't think I was a marriage type. And, uh, you know, my wife changed my mind. So, you know, I, I love being married. You know, I'm getting fat. <laughs> marriage <laughs> making me fat. But uh, outside of that, you know, I, I really enjoy it. It's good to have a partner to travel with and, Talk to and hang out with and everything else, mm -hmm. you know. I love it. You guys hang out a lot. You guys hang out in places that most of us would never see. I mean, was that a real tiger you were taking a picture with? Yeah, that was a real tiger, man. I, I, it was actually my idea, and then I got I chickened out. <laughs> I mean, so uh, say what? I was like, is that a stuffed tiger? Or is that a real tiger? Because we no, ain't man. See what y'all couldn't see. Well, that it was two other tigers in the cage walking around. No way. And so when we were down there, I stood up, and uh, one of the tigers looked at me and growled at me. I mean, wow. What? You hear a tiger growl and make your whole inside rumble, does he? Oh, my and, God. And uh, start walking toward me, growling. Oh. Mm -mm. And I said, my heart dropped. And after that, the guy ran over to the tiger and hit him twice with a stick and he turned and went the other way. But I was ready to go after that. So Ryan was still having a good time. <laughs> but it was all over for me. <laughs> well, I don't know if you know this, but we had a loose tiger here in Atlanta. No joke. Was it you? I like to pray couldn't figure out why I liked him, but I actually liked T-Pray. I'm just saying. <laughs> no, actually, no. We actually had a loose tiger. So, so far that I can remember, we've had a zebra on 20, and we had a tiger a couple days ago. Yeah, there's a lot of zebras running around Chicago. <laughs> I, I don't even, I don't, I don't, I don't. I'm not even going to give a follow-up. I'm not with that. I'm not. Yeah. All right. So. <laughs> Walk down 47th Street. <laughs> 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 Big one, small one, some you shouldn't have it. I get it. I get it. I get it. Now you you've been a part of media for years, correct? 
You would yeah, that's true. Rolling yeah. out. That's who you are still with now. Now, mm -hmm. rolling out from what I can just come to some of the research. You, that's more of an urban uh, magazine, correct? Is that correct? Yeah. Um, yeah, urban entertainment, okay. and lifestyle uh, publication, digital and print. Mm -hmm. um, in, uh, in 20 markets in print. Um, and then, of course, it's national online. And um, yeah, man, that's 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 my my thing now. Do you enjoy it? Oh yeah, I love it. I love it. You know, um, I was before that. I was at Uptown Magazine, and before that, Sister to Sister. So wow. Um, before that, Sidestepper, Sidestepper dot com was before all of them. <laughs> really? I was gonna. I, yeah. I was gonna ask you. I was gonna asking ask you. Did Sidesteppers come after? Just because you're involved with those things, did that come after? But you're actually saying it came first. Yeah, Shy Step was first. And interestingly enough, Sister to Sister came because of ShyStepper.com. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. When Shy Stepper first launched, you know, it was super, super popular. I remember. Um, and uh, I started doing like an e-commerce piece, like a store. And, hmm. and um, Sister to Sister asked me to help them with the e-commerce piece. And that's how my whole career in media got started from, from Shy Stepper. Wow, look at God. It's crazy, right? I have a question. Yeah. Because you are in media and you could be involved. Are you a member of Team Petty too? <laughs> I'll never tell. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, guys. We might have one. We might. I never had one tell me. They won't tell me. You hear the last? Yeah, can... Do y'all hear the last? Mm. I'm I can't close. take credit for Team Petty. I do like it, though. I just hope they don't, don't give me y'all. <laughs> Let me tell you, right, that's the thing. I have to, I said from this point on, everybody that comes on the show, I'm going to at least ask the question. Now, they probably not going right. to tell me, but your laugh was a little suspect. Uh, what you call laugh listen. yesterday was suspect. Man, I wish. Look, I got some content I want to feed them. <laughs> really? Ooh, let me do some tea real quick. That was shady. Mm. Right. Listen, I, I tell like you, Teddy, that's a good idea. Let me tell you what could happen. You can actually send me the content, and then you and I could just laugh about it because I don't. It's I, Team Patty is nice. It's fun. Let me just keep it like that. It's it's funny. It, it is funny. Some of it is like, Ooh, but it is funny. All right, so let's move forward. Yeah. You are known as the media guy in stepping, and you know most events you're hosting, you're commentating, you're doing whatever. How has it been? How have you been able to keep yourself above reproach? I don't really hear anything about you in terms of what a negative. That, what do you mean? Like yeah, what, you mean? what I mean by that, you seem to have this standard, and and I never hear anything about gossip or you being involved with anything that's bad. I mean, how do you maintain that good level of integrity? What have been your secret to that? Yeah, well, I think. Um... Well, I, I, I see myself as a real man, you know, um, and I think as a real man in certain things that, you know, at least from the way I was raised, my dad was a Vietnam veteran and he was a real, like real man's man. Mm. And um, I don't believe that um, it should be in a man's behavior to gossip. I don't think that's a masculine trait. So um, I don't get the telephone calls about what's happening next and who did this and who did that. And, I'm, and my standard for, um, for shotstepper.com was always that we may talk about controversial stepping topics, but I never um, talked about people's personal business. Uh, I don't want anybody to put mine out there. I mean, because we're not celebrities. Um, even though we may get a certain level of popularity in our particular genre, you know, mm -hmm. dance. Mm -hmm. We're not, so we don't get paid enough to be, have our business put in the street and stuff like that. So, um, that's always been my standard, you know. Um, even when Shy Stepper had the anonymous portion to the website, I always communicated with my, under my name. Mm. You know, um, and uh, I believe that a man should be able to stand by whatever he, whatever he say. If you got, if you want, if you if you can't stand on it, you shouldn't be saying. It. Wow. So. Wow. Um. So that's how I kept my integrity. I I had rules to the game, and uh, I did break my rule one time, and it, and it backfired bad, and it made me understand. And it wasn't 
me breaking it really it was somebody else I allowed to have access to my platform that um, mm -hmm. talked about somebody's personal business and uh, and it didn't turn out well and it just re you know assured or confirmed that I had the right approach in terms of just make just keeping it stepping. You know, I get enough like drama from c criticizing people about stepping. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Correct. When that happened to you, what were some of the things that you did to uh, fix that or to clean that up? Um, well, you know, that particular situation had got pretty bad, even, even to the point where, you know, it was almost going to the street, you know. Oh, wow. And, um. There were some people in the stepping community that I loved that saw it unfolding and they intervened and um, created a conversation between me and the person that um, had the problem. And we I were able that. to have a conversation to squash it. You know what I mean? I love so, that. Mm -hmm. And I just never did it again. I never allowed the platform to be used in that way again. You know what I mean? I love that. There's a certain level of responsibility that I realized I had. Yes. And, um, and I had to own up to that, yes. you know, mm -hmm. so that's kind of how it is. Then the other thing is, just to be quite honest with you, uh, when the site got more positive, I started making more money. Wow. <laughs> well, let's, let's, let's stay on that. Let, let's stay on that piece. Cause you know, I'm new yeah. to this thing. How do you make, yeah. money? how do you make money doing this? Well, you know, the funny thing is I had to learn where where my margins were and this is the cheat code and the only reason i'm gonna give you the cheat code is because i'm about to retire anyway so y'all can take it over oh. <laughs> you you and black swan and all y'all we can have, have it, it. y'all can have it in well, uh, eight count step i don't make sure i don't miss nobody i love all of y'all so you're gonna give uh, us the code the blueprint y'all got something to write with all right yeah, hold on this, we got we got a pen over there yeah, i need to write so this down the, go the ahead cheat code is understanding where the margins are in dancing and for me for the longest time i thought the margins were online but realistically the margin is when you can move your audience from online to an actual event or even a product um hmm. so you know getting the advertisement was cool but really the advertisement just pays for the site and give you a little gas money. Correct. You know? Mm -hmm. Um, and people was thinking I was getting rich off the site, like money just was myster you know, yeah. mysteriously coming from the online gods, but it don't work that way. If people don't spend money, you don't make money. And and, and so you have to have an engagement component that to, to really be able to maximize your audience. And then Provide something of value, of course. You know, I ain't just trying to get money from people. I want to make sure that, in, in, in addition to that, that I'm providing something that they enjoy. You know. Well, I tell you what, uh, you've been uh, in this game for a long time, and people really respect you and respect your brand uh, with Shy Stepper. So, for that, I have to say, job well oh, done. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. The rest yeah. of us are just trying to uh, get there. So I do appreciate you. I will call you offline um, and ask you to go a little bit deep over into that. It'll probably be my... <laughs> yeah, they're not sure. You see, we were talking about getting the home, getting, getting the internet speed up. I don't mind giving none of the in information. Oh, out. my God. Oh, my God. If I... I don't even want to talk about it. It's too sensitive. Too soon. It's too soon. So I, de I definitely would give you a call myself and probably about four other people. With you know, we're the T team. So we're gonna call. We're gonna have our yeah. pads ready. And so we need you to give us the key to life with this thing. <laughs> All right. So let's go on a little bit. Let's go a little bit closer. Let's go a little bit closer. We okay. have the Oscars. I call it the Oscars of stepping coming up in a few days. Just a few days away. Have you ever competed? I have competed. You know. I, um... I won the um, beginners in 2001. Wow. And, yeah, the very next year I danced, and they didn't have the world largest in 2002. They had what they called the world largest steppers party. Okay. And I competed in that. I was on the stage at the same time as Dre and and um, Lady Margaret and Stephen B and Sharita. And, wow. You know, I think it was Dan and Tori and... And uh, I mean, they had a, uh, like an all-star cast. They all decided to call on my number. It's my second contest. <laughs> 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 we 
Wow. Ain't going to be watching me, but I did my best. We went to work. That's just the way that it was. You know, um, it gets wow. tossed right into the fire. And then 2003, they didn't have um, the world largest again. Um, and I competed in the biggest contest that year, which was Steppers Compete with Angie Fane mm. and Keith Hubbard. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, I won the trio with Dre and Stephen B. Wow. And, yeah. First all-male trio to do it. Really? And, uh, in, in, um, in 2005, Dre and Stephen B did it again with Dave Max uh, in the world's largest. And, wow! Uh, and my last time competing was in '04. Um, I competed in Atlanta and Houston that year. Wow! Um, and um, I won in Atlanta. I lost in Houston. Hmm. Um, and um, after that, I after that, my daughter was born in '04, and oh, I took right. a year off mm-hmm. to raise her. Mm-hmm. And in 2000, and um, uh, in the 2000 and uh. Well, 2006 would have been the year that I created Shotstepper.com. It began in 2006. Wow. And, yeah. So hmm. after I created Shotstepper.com, I, I never competed again. And the reason was is because I was become a critic. <laughs> oh. And I don't think you can compete against people and critique them at the same mm-hmm. time. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, I think that's going to be a little biased. It's going to be a little biased. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's like, man, I just beat you in the contest. How you going to tell me what I did wrong? <laughs> <laughs> what have you? That, does your wife step at all? Yeah, I taught my wife from scratch. I and mean, then when I got her to a certain point, I took her to Tick Man and I took her to Kevin Dockery and I took her to Donnie Davis. Those three guys have mm-hmm. really helped my wife go to even another level because she only can know my style at home. Right. So it was more for her to get. And um, they really helped. I mean, I think Kevin Dockery really, more than anybody, helped her the most. Well. But mm-hmm. Tick gave her a lot of control. Mm-hmm. And uh, and Donnie helped her tra- learn how to travel and move her feet, move her feet. Her, you know. So they all helped her a lot. Well, let me first say that, let me stop and say this. I am interviewing Mr. T. Pratt of ShySteppers.com. We have him in the we don't have him in the building, but he's on the phone. Sorry, we don't have an audio today. I mean, I'm sorry, a visual today, a video today. We just went straight audio. Uh, but he is letting us know kind of the journey he has taken over the last few years in this thing called stepping. So we are talking to Mr. T. Pratt. Now, T. Pratt, where did that, I know you're Terrence Pratt, but did you break yeah. your own name down or people just started calling you T. Pratt? How did that come No, nah, they started calling me that. I never, um, you know, mm-hmm. I never, I never, <laughs> I never um, call myself T. Pratt. Um, I still don't. People ask my name, I tell them Terrence, but I will say T. Pratt now for the stepper because that's, this is how they know me. That's and, um, and I always know when it's a stepper that knows me when I'm out. Because mm-hmm. I hear him say, T. Pratt. You know. <laughs> what? <laughs> but the funny thing is, now everybody, even my family, my sister, my my wife, my kids, everybody calls me T. Pratt now. Really? <laughs> yeah, but it came from the steppers, though. It came from the steppers. Yeah. Do you regret... Uh, is there anything in, in, in this whole stepping community so far that you've regretted that I know you said you had the regret of allowing somebody to come in on your platform a little bit, but has there been anything else that's kind of thrown you off your off your block a little bit? Like, OK, I'm done with steppers. I'm not going to deal with this anymore. I'm out. Has any that has it ever gotten to that point for you? No, no, never for me. Um, I love I love stepping mm-hmm. and um and I kind of, I kind of paid my own. I, I, you know, I'm, I make my own way. Uh-huh. And uh, when you love something, nobody else can make me want to walk away from something. That's what I hate about a lot of the new generation. When they say, "Oh, you're being too hard. I'm gonna be gonna scare people away from the dance." I just came from the time of stepping when, if you didn't like it, then leave shit. And if you like it, stay, stay. And, right. and have fun and love it. Mm-hmm. And um, so. No, no, I never wanted to uh, leave. I, I know I, I regret it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the only thing I can think of that I regret is my, my wife party. My wife rooftop, rooftop party was canceled because I let somebody else handle the contract. And when he fell out with the venue owner, 
my party was canceled and uh oh, wow. i lost that money yeah. and uh i lost a lot of money but more than that i lost my vision that was going to be dope as hell excuse my language and uh, yeah. i never had a chance to see that vision from here and that hurt that to this day i'm still bothered by it but i had to let it go it seems like it, it, with you and it's probably a lot of us when we have a vision and we first of all we can't expect everyone to see your vision that that's first mm -hmm. um they may say okay girl yeah i'll jump in i'll get with you or guy I'll, you my buddy i'll help you but i think a lot of times we give our baby if you will to someone mm -hmm. else to handle and people are not going to treat your baby like you would treat your baby you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. That, if that's your thing and it's, it's, it's dear to you, you're going to do whatever it takes. I know as a mother, I will do whatever it takes to make sure my children are okay. It seems right. as though right. when we try to involve other people at times in our vision, sometimes we lose yeah. the bit. Like we give it to someone else, but then as time goes, you, you tend to lose it. You know what I mean? Like, what, what am I doing? Right. So that's a valuable yeah. lesson. Like, take care of your yeah. own vision. Like, do your... Not that you can't get help. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying right. is some of the stuff you need to kind of keep it close to the heart and let that, you and God deal with that part of it. You know what I mean? Like give you them know, pieces of it. Uh huh. Yeah. You know, the funny thing is it was necessary for me to take that loss in order to grow to another level. My nephew was the one that made me feel better. He said, this is my little nephew, 20 years old. Wow. Looked at me and said, well, uh, you know, Ice Cube say you ain't a boss till you take a loss. There you go. And, uh, there you go. and what it taught me was this. The, the most beautiful thing that it taught me was how much people appreciated and respected me, you mm. know, and how much love the community gave me after I failed. Mm. Mm. That, that almost hurt my feelings. It made me happy so much that it hurt my feelings because the second community didn't do what I thought they were going to do. Which was talk bad about me. Right. And, you know, kick right. me when I was down. They lifted me up. A lot of people said, T, don't worry about the money. Consider mine a donation. Uh, a lot of people said, pay me back when you can. Um, wow. You know, uh, it was just an out outpouring of love, which I needed at that time because my feelings were really hurt, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I learned a lot in those failures, you know. That's, um, that speaks a lot you about know, you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I almost walked away then, though, to answer your question. I was ready to walk away then. Wow. And, uh, and a lot of people called me and said, you can't walk away off of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that ain't how you walk away. Right. <laughs> and, and, you know, you want to wonder what the difference is because there have been things that have happened to others that I've heard about. I wasn't, you know, in that time, but I've heard about it and they walked away. You know, it might have been a right. bad situation, you know, something right. similar to what you've gone through and they walked away. What do you think the difference is? I understand the community. Maybe it's the difference with the community. Maybe it's because the community lifted them and maybe didn't li lifted you, but didn't lift them. Or do you think it's a personal because I think that has to come within as well. It might be from your father, uh, your upbringing that may give you that little extra uh to keep fighting because this fight gets hard in life, period. Yeah. And some people give up. What do you accredit? I understand you said that the Stepman community was a piece, but what is the other piece you can accredit that to, the fact that you did not walk away? Um, well, one thing I've always tried to pride myself on is, is quality, bringing quality to the people and being, mm -hmm. you know, just being a stand-up guy. I always say this, anybody in the, in the entire Stepman community or in the world can, can hire a DJ and invite people to an event. Hire DJ, get a flyer, and invite people to an event. There you go. That's the simplest thing in the world to do. Mm -hmm. So it begs the question of why some people succeed at it and why others fail. Mm. You know what I mean? Yes. And for me, I have had a lot of success in the community, and um, and I attribute that to the fact that I, you know, um, that people respect the fact that I, I, I try to do bring quality bring new ideas like the Stepping All-Star Game or the Music Masters Challenge or whatever it is, I always try to bring some creativity and ingenuity and, and treat people well. Um, so for me, um, I felt like I had more to offer. 
Mm. You know, it, your and, journey uh, wasn't done. As long as you got more to offer, and the people, the people tell you when it's time to go. You know. How important is it for people to, and I know it's hugely important, but how important do you think it is for people to like, to personally like the promoter? Because I think a lot yeah. of times people, you know, just because you get a digital flyer together and, and it's a nice flyer, you got a nice picture with some folks on it and the DJ might be hot. But if the promoter, if people don't like the promoter, that can be a problem because I'm just saying. You know what? That's a great question. Thank you. That is an incredible question because it because in stepping is different than the rest of society. Mm. In the rest of society, we'll go to a nightclub and every nightclub night has a promoter, but we may not have a clue who it is. We just want to go have a good time. That's true. In stepping is different. In stepping, the promoter is everything. Um, it's very it's very important. Yeah. You know, and that's why a lot of of people lose because you, you, I didn't just come in the game and start throwing parties. I first had to build my credibility up in the community. Ooh, wait a minute. Let me see. And, Hold uh, on a second. Hold that thought. <laughs> Let me sip. Let me sip. Hold on just a second. Hold on. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Because yeah. everybody got a yeah. party. I'm going to be just honest. Think about how long Drew been putting it down. He just threw his first event. Stay with me. Stay with me. I hung up on him. Wait. See, that's why you can't touch stuff. See, that's why I shouldn't touch anything. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Y'all stick with me. Who's calling anyway? Hello? Sorry. Somebody called at the same time and I tried to ignore the call. It didn't work. But go ahead. So you said <laughs> it didn't work. Okay, so yeah, go back. You said yeah. Dre is. Go ahead. I was saying Drew. I Drew. was saying think about how long Drew has been competing and winning and teaching at, at such a high level and he just now threw his first weekend event. True. You know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It take, you have to invest into this community. You know? Mm -hmm. um, before you have any success and then you have to start small. Like we didn't start at the convention center. We started at Mr. G's. We didn't move to the convention center until it got to a point in Mr. G's where you just could not move in there. We have both sides full to capacity. And that's what you want. That's actually what yeah. you want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think yeah, a, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Go ahead. it's a lot of people, I think, that may be a little bit premature in um, their party giving. You know what I'm saying? They, they, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Now. Yeah. They, they come out the gate doing three day weekends. Yeah, I mean, straight now. up. Uh -huh. It's like, why are we doing three day weekend? Who are you again? So I, you know, yeah. and I think they see the bigger guys uh, doing those events successfully, but they have to understand that that had to take growth. People had to build your credibility. Thank you, Nicole. That people had to get to know you, and and like you said, in stepping, you your credibility is huge. Because I, I mean, how big is the the DJ piece? Now, what if they like you, they love you, but they don't like that DJ? Do you think they'll still come? <laughs> yeah, no, nah, no. Nah, well, yeah. yeah, I do think they'll come, but I think whether they keep coming or not um, will depend on the corrections you make over time. Mm -hmm. You know, and the music is important. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for us, we try to keep everything the same. Um, so the reason we had the DJs we had, first of all, you know, Mel Chris really gave birth to the new school movement, even though he's been DJing for like thirty years in the oh, in industry. God. He was one of the first people at, at 3G back in the day to really embrace the new school with the music. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so Mel Chris is so versatile. I mean, he can look at, our crowd is interesting because we got people coming from all over the United States plus the hardcore Chicagoans who appreciate our different kind of music. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like they want real stepping music in mm -hmm. Chicago. So mm -hmm. you need a DJ like Mel Chris that understands the appetite of everybody. Oh my god. And, and then DJ Cross, you know, Cross was our class DJ for Dread Company like 15, 16 years ago. Really? So yeah, so Cross for me and Drake Cross is family. But he's also one of the top DJs in the nation now. Wow. But Cross is family for us. Wow. And then Shorty Smooth is my partner in crime. Love it. So everything that I do, so from the All Star Games to 
uh, the music master. Anytime I got a creative idea, mm -hmm. Shorty Smooth is the man I execute it with. You know, because Shorty is good with technology. He's yes. good on with, with MCing. He's yes. good on the fly. Good with the music. He's social. Um, Very much so. so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Shorty is my partner in crime. And so, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't even want to leave those three guys on the market for our weekend. I love it. So I'm going to go ahead and lock you down for next year. Let me go ahead and lock you down. Yeah, I need them every year, all three of them. And there's some other guys I would love to work with. Mm -hmm. But, like, the after party, we always use Roy Shannon. And that's because when we first started the after party, it wasn't as popular as it is now. And nobody wanted to do it. And Roy was the only one that would agree to do the party. Mm -hmm. So now that it's grown big, I believe in loyalty. And, uh, mm. you know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. Roy is the man, you know, um, I really would, if there was a DJ I really would like to work with that I haven't had a chance to really work with yet, it'd be Black Cool. Shout um, out to Black I, Cool. I really like what he's been doing. Yeah, Black Cool is definitely making his way through this thing and I, I'm really enjoying his uh, journey. Uh, I want to also, yeah. I want to stop right here and give a shout out to Oh So Smooth Radio. That's, you know, that's, I call him my boss, but you know. That's a long story. I forgot. We are, we are on Old Soul Smooth yes, Radio. Yes, we are. Yes, we are on Old Soul Smooth Radio. So our listeners are taking advantage of this beautiful interview that we're doing with Mr. T. Pratt. I don't even know. Has anybody really interviewed you before? Because you're usually interviewing everybody else. No, I've never. I've been interviewed by Lamont Watch from Club Stepping, but it's usually around. This is the first time. I wish, I, I wish you were doing it in person because I like to look at you. I, I see, you, nah. see the people too. We can do it but, again. It's not a problem. It is not a problem. Yeah, but yeah, this is the first time. I'm, you know, I had this kind of interview. Yeah, I think Lamont Watch interviewed me twice before, but it's usually like around a, a specific topic. You know. Well, I love it. I wanted to get to know a little bit about T. Pratt. I know we're we're leading up into the event you have coming up on Friday, uh -huh. but I wanted to get to know who T. Pratt is. Just a little bit about uh, T. Pratt. <laughs> now, yeah. have you thought about uh, bringing uh, sets to different cities or different states? Have you thought about moving it around a little bit? Or no, absolutely not. Because uh, well, I already so, so you know before. Stepping got big like this when it was just in Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, Pete Frazier used to do sets all over the nation, you know, LA, Las Vegas. I, mean, I used to go to him, Atlanta. Mm -hmm. But when Stepping got big, you know, it created his own promoters. So now people don't need me to come to their city and throw a party. They can throw their own parties. Yes, yes, um, yes, we do. But what happens is, you know, there are a few major events that I'm affiliated with. So to me, that's my way of hosting something in a city like. I host the Sunday portion of the uh, Heritage Ball, and the Heritage Ball is the biggest stepping event in the nation. So shout out to the I, Heritage I love Ball. That. You shout know, out I to host, the Heritage Ball. Um, the a Sunday portion of the White Party in Detroit. That's one of the biggest parties in the nation. Yes. Um, you know, I've been sort of a media partner for uh, Hall of Night Steppers Ball in Los Angeles, and yes. uh, I'll be back to LA this year as well and um, myself and i will as well the, another <laughs> event that's coming up that y'all really need to check out is phoenix with angie uh fame yeah this is her first one this year right this is her first one i've been going down there with her for like three years okay but she left and started jewels and gents before it was one step okay and uh and shout out to them too like no 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 no, you don't. No disrespect, but Angie is my is my homie for a long, long time. Wow. She is doing an incredible job. The event is growing, and um, I'm a part of that every year, man. So, uh, I, that's my way of getting out and touching all of the community. They need to bring me to something new. Oh, you know what, man? You doing something for oh, Look at that! What an amazing <laughs> segue. Love the segue. It was right. beautiful. <laughs> Yes, we are doing uh, with Damian Rose, Nice Entertainment, uh, yeah. the uh, MLK Weekend up in Virginia. That should be a lot of fun. That's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, they're going to start really, really plugging that. But guys, if you have not heard about it, T. Pratt and myself, we're actually hosting a Friday Night Live show. So it's going to have like interviews. We're going to have a break for like a band. It's, it's going to be straight up like a late night talk show That's on Friday. Dope. That's going to be off the Do y'all see the energy? Do y'all see me and T. Pratt go? We're going to cut up. That's all I can say. I'm following your lead. 
Oh, here we go. Here they go. Oh, Lord. I'll follow you. No, that's going to be a lot of fun. I, I'm looking forward to it. No, man, you, you, listen, hey, you're the, let me bow. I'm bowing. I'm following your lead, man. I'm coming up behind you. I, what? But I'll take it if you'll give it to me. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm giving it. <laughs> All right, so let's talk a little bit about this event you coming up, have coming up with Andre Blackwell on Friday. Tell us about this event. I'm sick of seeing the flyers. Y'all don't tag me and I all love them. I'm coming. Right. Tell us about this event. Right, right. We need more people to come. Um, <laughs> Tell us so about it. This, this is our ninth year, man. A lot of people can't count, man. I've been seeing people I know have been doing our party longer and they celebrated 10 years. Anniversaries, and I know they wasn't doing them before me. Uh -oh. <laughs> but, What's that? Wait a minute, just, hold on a second. Wait, uh uh, wait, let me sip real quick. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Right, right, mm -mm. right. <laughs> now, but this is our ninth year. Next year, our 10th year, we do something real special. Um, you know, it's been a um, and I love, I love, I love this party. It's a this like, definitely a labor of love, though. I mean, a lot of work goes in, into it, and um, and uh, but you know. It's one of the, to me, one of the dopest parties of the year. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm not just saying it because it's mine. I, I was thinking um, that, but go ahead. I'm kidding. Go ahead. Part, part, well, part, partially. Okay. But, <laughs> <laughs> but the reason why this party is so dope is this. Rarely do you have all of the best out-of-town steppers in the nation, in the nation mm -hmm. coming to an event where you also have the best steppers in Chicago. Mm, it's a beautiful so, thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, because of the contest the next day, all of the top dancers are here to compete. So you got them, but then you also have people that walk in. You know, there are a lot of Chicagoans that just don't travel the step. Mm, somebody just you asked know? that, too. Somebody asked, why do the legendary uh, steppers no longer come out to local sets? So this right. event tends to yeah. pull in those locals. Right, right, yeah. So, you know, for, for an event like ours, you know, we'll be able to get a lot of those people that, that you won't see, you know, like like some of the people, uh, like Dee Dee, um, mm -hmm. for instance, is a, a original high stepper, one of my mentors and people I really love to watch. Mm -hmm. But you get people like him that's out in, in droves. Wow. And so you can get a, you can know, you can lay eyes on these guys, dance with these guys, as well as all of the new people as well. So you get you know? a chance to touch and, those uh, different hands, touching different hands, and I think it's an amazing thing. Um, how would yeah. they get tickets to the event? How much is it at the door? Can you pay at the door? Give us a little bit more, get a little bit more nugget what, about that. What was the first question? How what? How what can they think? get the tickets? Can they be purchased okay. online? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So general admission ticket is $20, um, and you come on in at 8 o'clock and party all night. Okay. Uh, VIP is twenty five dollars okay. in advance. Both of those are advanced ticket prices. So at twenty five dollars, you get a, a guaranteed seat because the seats do sell out. Okay. And you go to Dallas. So what time you get there, your seat will be waiting for you. Okay. Um, but if you come for the first hour, you can come in an hour early, and we have uh, complimentary wine and past hors d'oeuvres. Oh, wow. um, so for that first hour, and that's only an extra five dollars. I don't understand why nobody would to spend that extra five. But um, if you miss both of those, then you can come in at the door for thirty. Do you? And um, you don't get the so, wine at you don't get the wine at thirty. We don't get the wine. No, no, you don't get the wine at. Well, you can get it, but you just gotta go to the bar and pay for it. Oh, <laughs> wait a minute! I just paid thirty, and I can't get. <laughs> right, right, yeah, no, you get it. Oh, it's you know? <laughs> I, I want to talk about the ticket prices just for a second. I, sure. Listen, listen to me, y'all. Listen, if you're listening to this show right now, I am not, I promise you, I am not throwing shade at anyone. I'm just making a, I'm asking a general question. Uh -huh. Why are the tickets so high at some of these one-day events? I'm just saying it's one day. I, well, I'm going to tell you why. Okay. We try, always try to keep our prices. We got one of the lowest, nat lowest cost national events in the nation. And the reason why it's one of the lowest is because it's just economies of scale. You know, Chicagoans are just not going to pay some of them crazy ass prices. Correct. So we have to keep ours lower than, you know, some of the nights where I see it's like 45, 50. 
that night. That that's a little but much. I wish we could charge that much because um, I understand it. You know, from the promoter side, working with hotels is not cheap. You know, there are guaranteed um, food and beverages that you have, and mi minimum purchases. Sometimes you got hotels as part of your package. Right. And uh, if you don't charge a certain amount, you're basically throwing the party for fun. You know, if you want to make anything, you have to put a, 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 a overage on top of what your break even is, you know? And I, and I get that. But for a second, I need you to think on this other side, the people that are not okay. promoters. All right. I'm going to speak on behalf of all the other people that are attending these parties. I think I have, I think I can do that. T sippers, let me know that I can do that. Send some hearts, some thumbs, or something, because I'm going to speak on y'all's behalf regarding these tickets <laughs> prices. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I get it. The hotel is expensive. I get all that. Right. But okay, let me think of how I want to say this. All right. I'm, I'm trying to be politically correct. Listen. If I pay you $50 mm -hmm. for one night, there's a couple of things that need to go on. Okay. Hey, there needs to be a smoke machine that starts when I come through the door. Why are you doing that? There needs to be a smoke machine. <laughs> I need to at least have at least one free drink, one free drink, a biscuit, and some mm -hmm. good sound. These Some of these people are having an event. Am I on a soapbox? Let me stay here for a second. Some people are having an event. It's 50 bucks. They got one speaker. Ain't no biscuits. The bar is ridiculous. The prices, we try to sneak our beverages in because I got, listen, we try to sneak up some beverages in because the, the cash bar is ridiculous. And then the cash bar only take cash. Why you don't take a debit card? I'm just saying, promoters, listen. Well, uh, let me let me comment on that. Can I can I can I get a little bit technical for a minute? I guess. I guess. I got an attitude, but you can go ahead. I know that the technical stuff ain't fun, but no. But, uh, but look, I call it it's to your point because I'm not gonna say you know I'm I'm not talking about justifying the cost at this point. Mm -hmm. I, I believe in something that we call this called market correction, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And market correction is the idea that. When it's too much of anything in the market, the market will correct itself. Mm. And only those things with quality, that are quality will, will survive mm. when the market corrects itself. You know? That's a good so point. if you charge your fifty dollars and you got a whack product, then people are gonna stop coming and the market will correct itself because you won't be able to continue with your party. So in, 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 in essence, you're putting yourself out of business. By overcharging for an inferior product. Good. You good know. point. Very good um, point. Yes. Yeah. So when you got an event like the Harris Ball, for instance, you know, they might charge you 45 or 50 for one of the nights, mm -hmm. but then you go in there and getting the damn good experience. So you can't really talk cost without talking value. You know what I mean? Oh my God. You just said a mouthful. And I mean I'll, let's talk about the Harris Ball just for a second. That's another interesting yeah. that's another interesting segue. Um, I also yeah. will be uh, actually doing uh, some of the interviews and things like that. I'm a huge part of the Heritage Ball for 2018 as well. So thank you, mm -hmm. GDI, for uh, asking me to assist again for 18. I was there for 17, and I'm coming back for 18. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. The Heritage Ball, what I have noticed about them is that they do give a lot of a lot of value to what they do. I mean, you party. I mean, there's probably, I may be stretching it. There's probably 26 parties in like four days. I'm just saying. There's like a party. You can party on top of a party. Like there's already another party. You don't. You so confused. You just. You just. GDI tries to kill you. I actually had a woman stop me in the, in the uh, elevator. She said, "You know what? I ain't gonna let GDI kill me this year. I'm just not gonna." <laughs> let me tell you. Every party I was at, she was there. I was like, I thought you said you were letting them kill you. She said, "Girl, I say that every year." GDI, I, I, again, I'm not showing favoritism because I've done several of the bigger, some of the big parties. But uh -huh. in my personal opinion, and it's not because they're family, because they are. But in my personal opinion, I think they have somewhat uh, established a good blueprint. And I think as long as people kind of stay within that and not try to 
go over it, I think we may be okay. And I don't like the fact that if you don't go to some of these parties that's overpriced, that you don't want the, the backlash of it. Like when you see them out later, why you didn't come to my party? I mean, you don't have the heart to say, baby, because your party ain't got no quality. I mean, what? <laughs> oh, Lord. How, how do you, how, this, a promoter, how do we get around that? How do we, as the people that want to patronize you because we're your friends, how do we get, what is a political correct way to handle us telling you that your set is garbage? I see it. I like to see it. I, I love to get that feedback personally. You know? Now tell me, you, if my set is garbage, please tell me. Y'all hear that, right? You know, what went wrong. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I want to know because I want to be the best I could be. I want people to enjoy themselves. You know? Um, yeah, I want that feedback. Inbox me. Tell me your experience. You know, drink on me next time I see you. Shit, I want you to have a a good time. Now, don't say you didn't have no good time just to get a free drink. Because that's exactly <laughs> what they're going to do. Like, see, Fred, it, was, it sucked. But can I get that Hennessy <laughs> on the rocks, please? Now, hey, Black Cool, Black Cool, uh, uh, T. Pratt was just talking about you. He said he wants to do some stuff with you in the near future. So, good job, Mr. Black Cool. That's T. Pry. I just put a plug in for you, baby. So you owe me a little bit on a little book. On a little book and see where this is being broadcast. Oh, you right. I, I don't even You can't look and be interviewed at the same time. Now, do you have oh, something man. else you can look on? Like, do you have a um, something? I'm on my phone. I can look on my computer. Okay, well, look on your computer. Go to my wall. And I okay. should be live on your wall. Give us a minute, y'all. We're going to take a little break. We're going to let him see him hear himself, I guess. And he wants to see this, the uh, comments. So you will be able to see the comments uh, as well. Do you see us yet? I don't. I see. Only thing I see is four comments. Are we friends on Facebook, T. Brad? You see what I'm saying? I'm, a, I'm on uh, Latika Villas. Right. I'm with Tika. Yeah. You should I be able to see, see it. Face, but I don't see no comments. I see the live. I see the viewers. But I don't see the comments. Okay, did you hit the video? You have to hit it like you oh, like it's okay. hit this video. Oh Lord have mercy. Oh no. Oh, <laughs> okay, well turn it down because it's gonna have a delay. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm. I gotta turn the volume down. Yes, turn the <laughs> Okay. Jesus. I'm, I'm, you I'm, I'm like, like, what? what? <laughs> you see us now, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody says swipe right. Just swipe right. Always swipe right. Uh, what I got to swipe right to do? I think to see the comments. Is that what he has? T Simples, y'all help T Pratt. Y'all help him. I think you Pray have to. You know, I'm getting old shit. I, I can't tell y'all. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I, I don't see you. Okay, they're saying hey. Everybody's saying hey to Pratt. Do you see that? Do you see them saying hey I to you? I see it now. I see it. Okay, so Walter said you're his boy. Phil told me to get a heart. When it comes to telling the, the promoters, Phil, let me tell y'all something about Phil. Phil will tell you straight up. Now, Phil is one that will tell you. Well, He'll tell you. Well, tell them all right now to stay out of them choice hotels. Oh, oh, we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. Phil to put some clothes on. Oh, oh, wait, now, wait, wait. Uh uh. Phil, mm -hmm. that's why Phil almost naked on the internet. <laughs> I feel violated when I scroll. It's like, wait a minute. <laughs> no, Phil is getting that work in, so I want to tell you, Phil, you know what, I, we're, 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 listen, we're, we're, you know, we are very proud of your, uh, of your progress, Phil, so keep it up. Most of us T-Sippers love your pictures, so keep them coming. Ain't nobody stand t Brad or Candyman. You keep it coming, Phil, we like it, we see the difference. I'm just saying, I, I put your pictures together, like, okay, I see it. Like keep it. them coming, Phil. Ain't nobody staying, y'all. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Come on, Fio. It's fine. Y'all just hating. So anyway, anyway. And tell you somebody, <laughs> tell you somebody else I want to keep. I send her inbox message. Say, I don't like you. That doggone vet and that body by vet. The business. That girl body is uh-uh-uh. So when I'm looking at her, uh, why she's she kind of does like a little exercise video. So I'm gonna be honest. I'm sitting on my sofa going. Okay, I can't get in my mouth. Mm. I right. see how I see how that can work. I see how I was engaging it. I ain't doing it, but I can, whatever. Anyway, let's get back on top and let's talk about me. All right, so we have this event. It's coming up on Friday. It's leading up until the Oscars that Saturday. I need. Okay, wait. Let me first of all say this. There is a hundred dollar wager on the table. 
Mm -hmm. This $100 was actually put up by Carlton Puckett. He already has his, his predictions for, now he can only talk for new school. What are your predictions? I'm not going to tell you because if you didn't see it, then too bad. I don't think you're supposed to know all the betting information, do you? You're supposed to know all the betting information? You're supposed to tell the other person? It's like a secret. I don't know. I don't bet. I don't know. Who are your <laughs> who are your predictions this year in terms of all the categories? Old school, who do you have wow. for first? I know. I put you right on the spot. First. Wow. This year is going to be... Um, uh, well, let's start with old school. I need to go look and see. I'm going to go to the computer and see all the people that's competing. It's a big... Listen. Yeah, it's it's yeah, yeah. We got oh, some folks that listen. came up. We we got some folks that came out the the retirement, honey, to get into this year. I'm like, well, go on and do what you do, honey. Mm. I, I I can tell you in the old school, uh, Kevin Dockery is always uh, a, a force to be reckoned with. Always. All right. Okay. So um, so you know because of certain people that just let me. Okay, I think I got the list. Yeah, let's pull the list. Up. Okay, who you got? <laughs> no, pr no pressure. Well, you know, you got to, you got to, you got to, uh, you got to, your, um, you know, I call them like the RSPLE. You know, we were fortunate. They thought everybody was saying RSPLE, <laughs> so they, they just gave them to you. I'm like, gonna get it. Here goes some, here goes some new ones. You know, <laughs> your, your RSPLEs, of course, you got people that have a history of. And, right. and I think odds wise, those people you have to uh to, yeah. to take a look at and that's Royce and Sherry mm -hmm. and um okay. and uh and Kevin Dockery and, and uh and Cheryl. Now, once we get outside of them, there are some people uh that I think this should be pretty interesting based on the way they dance and the energy. The contest is about energy. Smoke and Erica, mm -hmm. um I think they dance very well together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, a lot of styles. I'm going up this list. Uh, uh, it'll be interesting to see. You know, of course, you got crowd favorites, Nike and Tori, but I don't right. know how well they're going to adjust to old school. Oh, they're old school so, this year. Okay. I mean, that's what this list is saying that they're in old school. Hmm. Okay. Um, they got a lot of people that I think are are great dancers, especially like at the club and they smooth, mm -hmm. like Drew and Tanya, but I don't know that that fared well in the, in the contest. Uh, I, I'm interested to see what, what Kamal is going to do. Kamal and Nicole. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Nicole has gotten a lot better. Kamal used to out dance her. Mm -hmm. um, but now she's gotten a lot better. So I'm interested to see how they flow. Both of them are tall, so they'll stand out. Kamal mm -hmm. crazy footwork. Um, so I'm interested to see them. Um, Maurice Thomas and Rhonda. Yes. Be interesting because Maurice is high energy. Yes. And energy yes. translates well in the contest. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. They're going to be sharp regardless. You know that. I mean, they're going to be, honey, let me tell you something, honey. Now, let me throw a curveball out there. Uh oh. Uh, no, I don't think so. I was about to say, I don't know though. But no, looking, I'm at, throwing, uh, honey, looking at uh, 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 Lawrence and Althea Jones, are real super old schoolers, depending on who's judging, they might have a chance. You know, people want that real kind of slow bop style. It uh -huh. could work for them, but they will be the only ones that could work for. Um, wow, okay. Okay. Well, Black. Now, you got a you gotta showman with you. So it's going to be depending on how, how you step up to the plate. you got a mm -hmm. veteran, Danny Stone, that's placed in the contest, and mm -hmm. he brings a lot of fun and energy. Um, so you're going to have to step up to the plate. No, sweetheart. <laughs> let, 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 me go ahead and make this, let me go ahead and make this correction right now. Uh, I will not be competing this year. Oh, y'all stepped out? Literally. Oh, man. <laughs> No. Look at that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. moving ahead. My man, um, uh, it's a lot of people in this contest that I like. Okay. I just don't know. You know? Um, okay. Of course, you got Jamil and Stephanie. I like them. Mm -hmm. um, Lionel is going to be interesting. You know, he's going to kind of turn up. You know that. So, in the contest, that, you know, I don't know if he can win with it, but he's definitely going to be a crowd favorite. 
uh, Lionel and Andrea and uh, Kirk and Bridget, of course. Um, okay, and they're old school, yeah. right? This is all old uh, school. This this is old school, right? Yeah, I'm in old school. Okay. So let's move to new school. Let's move to it. New school is really interesting. Let, uh, to to say uh, the least, to say the least, new school is the category yeah, it's, to it's watch this so year. So many people, and I love that most of the people chose to be in the most competitive category. I love you it. You know what I mean? Right. I like that. So give me your first place. Uh, Let's cut to the chase. Give me your first place winner. Look at this. Drew in. Drew in. First? Yeah. I think Drew coming back this year. Y'all heard it first. Mm. Yeah. Drew in. All right. Who's taking second? <laughs> <laughs> this is so tough. But I would say Ed and Amanda. I would say Ed and Amanda are gonna take second. Well who taking third? Tick man. What? Yeah. I'm just gonna and, say and, that. This, and these are some big ifs. These are some big ifs, man. Um there's some people that I feel really this that they could really shock people. It's gonna be an upset. Um, I think it's gonna be an upset. And the people I feel could shock would be Theo and Keisha, depending on which Theo show shows up. Because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Theo is like a great boxer that sometimes don't train for the fight. If you train for the fight, you know somebody get knocked out. <laughs> I, I, I ain't got no comment. But, uh, I ain't got no... Let, okay, because Theo is online. He's like... I like that dude. You like, you like Pratt. Yeah, like Candyman that. loves you. He's like, I like that dude. He's, he's real tall. Mm. Yeah, but uh, and then you got um, uh, Sean Bandy and Margaret. And let me say this. Mm. Oh shit! You know who? Mm. Um, Rich and Sabrina. I forgot them. See? Um, I forgot Rich and Sabrina. Mm. Uh, man, you got Darren and Susie. So, but look, uh, let me say this about Margaret. Okay. okay. Sean is a great dancer. He's really gotten better. It yes. took a long time for me to appreciate Sean. Okay. You know? Real talk. But I, I do appreciate him now. Okay. Um, but uh, he has with him Lady Margaret. And sometimes the woman is just as important in winning as the man. And um, in Margaret's case, whenever you see a lady that has won so many times mm -hmm. with so many different guys, right. you, know, you know it ain't just the man. It's her. It's her bringing it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. see it with Margaret, and you also see that with Sabrina. Uh, Sabrina wow. the Beast. Yes. And this is what people don't realize, right? And I realize this from, you know, my daughter mother was a stepper, and my wife uh, steps now. Okay. And I learned from watching videos with them. I'll be like, man, did you see what he did? And shit, they'll be like, oh, no, I was watching the lady. <laughs> Correct. I was going to ask you that because I noticed when people are talking about the couples, they always mention the, mention the man name, man's name. And I asked Carlton this yesterday, how big of a role does the woman play in this couple thing we got going on? Because you can't do it by yourself. I got to bring something. So how important do you think it's 50-50, which you say 60-40 man? I mean, what would you give the percentage in terms it's, of them. It's 50-50. If, if, if half of them judges are female, women watch women dance and men watch men. You know what I mean? Uh. And so it, it's really when you, so when you have a great female dancer to compliment the man, Whew. that's why those couples end up winning. So that's why Lady Margaret wins so much. That's mm -hmm. why a, a, uh, uh, Sabrina wins so much. People realize last year, Lady Margaret, I mean, uh, uh, Sabrina played higher than Drew. Sabrina and mm. Rich. You know, mm. and she won with Kevin Dockery. And she won with Kurt. So, wow. after a while, you gotta start to be like, yo, maybe it's her. Maybe it's her. <laughs> that makes sense. Mean? That really makes sense. That really makes sense. I don't think people really look at it like that. I think, because it's always focused on the man. I'm going, wait a minute, that lady was, did y'all see that dress? Or did you see them shoot? How important is the attire, especially on the man side? How important is that? Not not that important. Not that important. When I, I judged twice. It's not that um, important. It, 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 no, I judged twice. Shit, if you made an effort to match and, and the outfit didn't fall apart, 
I'm gonna give you a good score. I came to watch you dance personally when I was judge. Shit. Well, I got a little shade I, to throw. I, say what? I got a little bit to throw right there. Let's stay right there. Okay. <laughs> Why your voice cracks? <laughs> I don't know what you're going to ask me. People say that's why Drew didn't win. It's because of his outfit. Man, I so, love Drew and Ann's outfit last year. You see how, you see, do y'all see how, I don't want to say the word bias, but when people are judging, they're looking at different things. And you got T. Pratt to say he loved the outfit. Then you got some people say they didn't even try. Well, let me say this. Let me say this. I love when Phil came out in the black in the military fatigues and the black tank tops. Hmm. Uh, so here's the thing with fashion. It depends on your perspective on it. Stepping used to be about dressing up and looking mm -hmm. your absolute best. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Being being stepper sharp is really a part of the stepping tradition and culture. So mm -hmm. for people who stick to the culture and tradition, I get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I like it. I love innovation. I love the new school. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I love people's creativity. Those light up shoes. He Drew is in his twenty shit. Is he supposed to come looking like he's fifty? You know mm. what I mean? So mm. I liked it. It was a representative of his age. When Phil did it, you know, it's representative of his age. This is the new school. This is the young category. And then to do all of the tricks and crazy. Uh, shit that they do, excuse my language. Yeah, you're good at saying. You can't have no big ass suit on. Wow. Outfits are very subjective. Thank you, Dion. They, they, they obviously, and I didn't even think about is because of his age. You know what I mean? Just kind of how things, wow. And I think we, I think, since you've judged before, and I know like certain judges judge certain categories. Is that right? Because I don't think all the judges judge all the categories. Or is that how that goes? How does how the breakdown go? Do you have like no. a part of them doing this? I don't know if you know this, TJ. I, I, I reformed the whole judging process. Mm. So, and let me tell you why. These people used to be judged based on age. So, if you go to the old contest, it was like 35 and under. Yeah. And um, mm -hmm. then, Or then you got the 39 and under and 40 and up. Okay. But, I real, but it was controversy every year. And now you notice there ain't that many controversies in the judge. And the reason why is people should judge what they appreciate. And age has nothing to do with style. If I'm 50 but I learn from Dre, I'm a dad's new school. So mm. you should be judged by people who appreciate what you do. So new schoolers should judge new schoolers. And old schoolers should judge the old school category. And... Um, and so, so that's how the judging is split now. The, the um, old school category is judged by old schoolers, and the new school, school category is judged by new schoolers. And uh, but but beginners is really about mastering the basics of the dance. So mm -hmm. the beginners category is judged by old schoolers. Huh. But the trio mm -hmm. is judged by new schoolers. You understand? So it just depends. Y'all hear that? If you are in a competition, T. Pratt just gave you the book of life. He just really just told you the, the, the key. If you're new, if you're new, all right, now, if you're a beginner, learn, basics. learn your basics. It's not about a whole bunch of turns and tricks and try to do all that. Just do your basics successfully and clean because you're judged by the old schoolers. Old schoolers don't be doing all this stuff. Keep that in mind. I like that point. Yes. See, Pratt, do you think the judging is fair? Absolutely. I don't care what people have been trying to say. It's a conspiracy theory for years. That's totally, that's just bullshit, to be honest with you. People need something to talk about when they don't win. What happens is when people lose, their friends say, man, he was the best one up and you should have won that contest. So they pumping them up. What they, what they really should tell them is, man, he did an awesome job up there. Instead of making them feel like they got cheated for not winning, they should tell them that they did a great job and I really enjoyed your performance. Mm, uh, mm. And then people wouldn't feel like they got cheated. You feel me? I understand. Because only three people can win in a category. Mm. And uh, I don't, I mean, it's been all kind of conspiracy theories. People talking about when they got this for a card, they didn't have this on it or that. I don't believe it. Well, look, I judge two times. Nobody told me what to put on my thing. 
nobody. Mm. You know, and so then they were saying, oh, the, the, the issue ain't with the judges. Uh, the issue is when, when they get the scorecards together and do the calculation, that's when they cheat. You know, um, mm. Pete Frazier, I know, you know, I, I know Pete on a level that a lot of guys don't know Pete on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, Pete don't give a shit who wins. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. You know? You like that too? Yeah. The candy man like, loves you. <laughs> you know? Right. Right. I mean, you still got to pay it regardless. So, I mean, because some people oh, feel. Oh, maybe not. You might not get your check. <laughs> oh, my God. 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 Can somebody, oh my God. We, can somebody put something in my tr- Can I please have. We go. We go with orange juice. Oh, my God. God. Ah oh, shit, now that might who in might be telling me to Oh my god, that's, god, god. that's all that that oh, is the shame. Oh, oh the shit. I should have said that. Pete is my man, but Oh my god, really? But he ain't cheating people though. He ain't cheating people. Oh my god, I can't even get it. <laughs> okay, well how about addressing the elephant in the room? Um, all right. So <laughs> Because of <laughs> can't even get to the neck. Really? Really? Did you really just do that? Okay. <laughs> All right. So everybody, we love tick. We love that. Some people feel that tick has already halfway won. I'm no. just saying. You disagree? No, absolutely not. There's a lot of unknowns about tick tick coming back, you know? Mm-hmm. Can y'all hear me? I hear That's why I know about Tick coming back. Number one, we gotta see how Taff can hold up under the pressure. Well, she looked good in the prelims. She did look good, didn't she? she did. I loved her in the prelims. Oh, my God. Good. I danced with her uh, since the prelim, and she's smooth, she smooth as butter right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? She like, if she's a car, she run, she's running on all four cylinders. I love she, it. She's running right now. I love it. You gave her uh, four cylinders, though? Because you know you got six and eight. A six and eight, she might be on all eight. You know what I mean? I didn't know I that she was it. a sports star. I got... <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, that sister but, yeah. is doing it. Now, we're talking to T. Pratt. If you guys are just joining, we are talking to T. Pratt of Shy Stepper. So we got new joiner people coming in right now. So I want to make sure they know who we are talking about. And you have to rewind this tape. There's a tape like it's a VHS. Rewind this tape because you got to hear the shade that was just thrown by T. Pratt. I'm just saying. But go ahead. Go ahead with Tabitha. Uh, uh, yeah, but, um, but, um, uh, what did you just ask me? I lost my chair of thought. That's cause how, t- how, uh, the fact that they, some feel that he's already won. Uh, oh, sick man. man. And no, he said- no. So first I was saying, Tab, Tab with the, we got to see how she hold up. See, she got, she got some things she's going against, you know, yeah. Keisha, uh, Anderson, um, mm-hmm. you know, you got, you got uh uh Amanda Anderson. Yes. Um, you know, you got uh she got I mean, in that top batch of women, she's some badass girls in there. It really is. And uh and uh, you know, and like Amanda for instance, she has the mentality of a of a lion, you know. Yeah. She don't get nervous, she coming to rip your heart out in the contest. So uh-uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> you know, it's gonna depend on 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 that's one part. The other part is this. Tick Man is dependent on the fact that real dancing is going to win in this contest. And um, when it comes to real, true stepping, I don't know that anybody in the nation better than Tick Man. Yeah. Honest to God, that's just how I see it. Yeah. Uh, but the contest is more than just real dancing. It's about entertainment. Yes. And believe it or not, yes. the judges are impacted by the crowd. Yes. So yes. So if the crowd is cheering loud and they stand an ovation, that impacts the judge. The judges don't want to be the ones that don't pick the one that everybody loves, unless they just were terrible. You know, they did some clown shit. But but uh, you know, <laughs> here's another thing that can happen. You know, yes. Ed and Drew gonna come with something fancy and big. They got to. And there's a potential that they could fuck up. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm on LA. I'm on, I'm on LA. You know, know what? <laughs> this is how I'm talking, right? Lord, help mercy. 
Um, your okay. interview is giving me life. So let me just say that. It's a possibility that they could mess up somewhere. You know, drop the girl or slip and fall. And, and then, you, to me, you, you drop down a notch. You know? True. So, uh, so. Well, wait a minute. Let's stay right there for a minute. I'm just going to throw a little salt in the game. <laughs> there was a contest that Tick was in, and I'm, I'm not sure who he was dancing with, but she almost fell, and they got first. Who did? The girl Tick was dancing with. Oh, it's Danielle? So we can't say that. You feel what I'm saying? So I, you talking about 2006? When album? With Danielle? Uh, when album? Yes. It yeah, was with no, Danielle. No. Yeah, he shouldn't have won that year. So you That's don't think that... Opinion, huh? Mm. But, but, you know, they recovered like pros. And they yeah, they did. Still, the judges might have felt they still danced better than everybody else. I feel like if you slip and fall and then the very notes for it knocks you out of first place immediately. That's just my opinion. Do you think he got it on or she got it on popularity? That's the that's that's the question. Do you think people win these contests based on how popular they are? Popularity has something to do with it, but but here's the thing. How can you tease out popularity when the people that are generally more popular are also better dancers? Oh. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So how can yeah. I say whether it's popularity or the fact that you just dance better? Most of the people get popular from being better dancers. I agree. I got to say so, I agree with that. Yeah. Huh? I have to say I agree with that, actually. Yeah. So, you know, it's right now you got an interesting time in competitions where there's also a lot of bombs on the floor. <laughs> and, uh, and so a lot of people compete and should be competing right now. And so... I mean, yeah, most <laughs> all the people that's popular, you know what I mean? One of the popular people is going to have to win. <laughs> <laughs> I like that dude. Because uh, let me just be honest with you. I heard that there are fillers. Some of the people that should not be competing, they just up there to fill it up. Just so we can have a lot of show. Is that true? Like, do you agree? No, they're not fillers. The issue is that, and I understand Peace Dilemma. You know, he got bills to pay, and, and if I'm my first time in a contest, and I'm really not that good, I'm still going to bring 20 people to watch me. There you go. There and, you go. Uh, mm -hmm. And I understand that it's a business move. Um, I have said, I think that I think that he should shrink the contest back down to some smaller, but make it a little bit more authentic. Me and him have had con conversations at length about this. But he, he feels that the magnitude of it will decrease for a smaller audience, so he allows the, you know, more people to participate. But the bombs. Yeah, they not they not shouldn't be up there, man. They shouldn't be up there, they, or else they should be up there, but they should be in an intermediate category. You know what I mean? They shouldn't be up there on the floor with a Drew or Theo or uh, them guys that put in so much work. They're so right. good. What about Freeland? Fair to them. Do you think they should bring back? Do you think they should bring back legitimate prelims? Like really bring you know, you back? Know, you know the problem. What the problem? Everybody talk about elimination. There's a problem there too. And uh, the problem is that when they used to have eliminations, it was just a Chicago dance. So mm -hmm. the same judges could go to all the prelims. But now that it's a national dance, in order to have eliminations, you either have to do it on video. Or the judges will have to be there to judge because you can't have one person may judge different. So if they got a lot of people judging with different opinions, then you may have shit. You may have a uh uh somebody that like a say Kevin Godfrey bands say he get eliminated and then you got a bomb that go to the finals and now you're really gonna have controversy. You know, and it might just be because of different standards in judging. Well, maybe maybe they should establish, and it's just a thought because I'm I'm just gonna be honest. You're right. A lot of the people that may be up on that stage should not be there. It's like why why are you here? Go away while you're here. Anyway, maybe there should be like a um, you're selected. The judges are selected for different regions, okay? And it's just a certain amount of judges that selected, and then do it from there. 
You understand what I'm saying? Like, well, you, you know the problem with that? I thought about that too. The problem with that is then you'd have to have a, like a weighted system because how many do you take from Chicago and how many do you take from Detroit, for instance? Mm. Do you feel me? Mm -hmm. Because Detroit's been doing better in the contest than Chicago. So do you take more people from Detroit and less from Chicago? <sighs> that's interesting. That's interesting. I, that's I, that has got to be a resolve to it. To, I'm just honest. There has got to be some type of resolve. Now, again, I'm talking from the people that attend the event, not the promoter side. I'm talking about us. Now we're sitting at these con at these contests, and you'll have four hours worth of just. Why the contest so long? We don't got sleepy. We don't even know. Girl, who was in this contest again? We got our paper out. Like, did they go yet? I mean, it's just, it, to me, it's just, it's, it's draining. And then we're drinking. You know, our voice, we done left, our voice is gone because we've been hollering. It's time to go to bed. We are still competing. It's four hours. Yeah, that's too much. It's too much. That's too much. You know, I agree with you. You know, it got need to be, it need to be pared down. But I just haven't figured out a way that it could be done. You know. Well, before you retire, well, just, huh? before you retire, can you get that to Pete for us, please? We appreciate. it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I tried. No, I tried, Pete. I told him to make the contest smaller, and uh, you know. But yeah. then again, then again, you know, it will be the same people every year if you do it that way. So that might get boring too. What? You got the yeah, best dance. Okay, huh? you got the best dancers. I think each year you'll add a new person. Like somebody's gonna come up. Y'all ain't gonna always. Let me tell y'all something. I'm not gonna always be at the bottom of this lady female thing. I'm not gonna always be here. I'm gonna start making my way up. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm right, just saying, right, right. I'm going to start making my way up this food chain. And after a while, y'all going to see the tea lady up there doing her thing. So I think it gives people like myself th this thing to shoot for. But if everybody can get up there, then to me, it kind of loses its um, its credibility in, at times. Some people say, oh, and they're locals. They don't even come to the contest. That's a good question. Why do you think some of the locals don't even come to the contest? Um... You know, stepping is one of them things when you do it for so many years. You've been doing it for 30 years, it kind of loses luster. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, then I think some of them are cheap, you know. The old schoolers, they, they created a, a real problem for themselves. Mm. And the problem that they created for themselves is that they never placed a value on their services. So all mm. of them feel they should be getting in for $5 or free. And they can't raise their prices now. You know, mm. then they went to, after that, they went to club member discounts. Wow. And, and so they yeah. have trained each other that they don't want to spend more than 8 to $10 to get in a party. But then you they know, expect all this quality. Huh? And then they expect a whole bunch of quality. Right. You know, but then it'll be the ones that get in free or discounted that'll be talking the most stuff. See, I didn't say. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm trying to do better. <laughs> but you're right. I mean, listen, honey, it's the T show. You can do you can do what you do, but we'll call it what it is. They be talking the most right. crap. I ain't gonna cuss. My mama might be watching. Hey, mom. Um, all right. So we're excited. This weekend is coming up. We're gonna put and solve it. Go ahead and resolve this thing we got going. I have I have enjoyed this interview. If you guys have enjoyed this interview with T Pratt, show him some love. Are you looking online now? So you can see yeah, your heart. Yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking. All I'm right, looking. so he's looking. He wants to see his hearts float across the, the, the thing. So go ahead and throw some hearts across there so T-Prat can see his hearts and let y'all know. So he can know how much y'all love him and appreciate him for coming on this show. Look at your hearts. Do you see your hearts coming up? I see, see the hearts. Thank y'all. I appreciate like y'all. I love y'all. <laughs> Hopefully, hey, don't hold it against me all the craziness. <laughs> no, you're fine. Well, I'm, I'm going to say you were fine, but they will. They're going to hold totally, totally against you. You're fine. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but myself, thank Look at all those hearts. Okay, we got some mean faces. Those are probably Phil's. I'm looking at them float across. Oh, those, are from, those are probably from Phil. I'm tripping. Uh, but I, <laughs> myself and Kevin Neville's, uh, he said he don't like that dude. That's what Phil said. He don't like that dude. Uh, but uh, we, myself and Kevin Neville's are a part of the Dream Team this year. So we're actually commentating the entire 
uh, event. So that's going to be a lot of fun. I would love for you to come by the table and sit with us for a little bit. That'll be great. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I, um, look, Pete just joined in. Uh-oh. <laughs> Pete, rewind the tape. <laughs> rewind the tape, Pete. Remind, rewind the tape. Oh, it's uh-uh. Go uh-uh. I'm going to post it in a minute, Pete. It is. He idiot. Pete, rewind the tape. Rewind the tape. Uh, Phil said, oh, yeah, I said he sucked. You know, Phil, my man. I know. Phil is a great teacher. He doesn't talk me more about this little trio thing than anybody. So I, I definitely respect Phil dancing. That's my man. We love, we but, love uh, Phil. We love Phil. Anyways, yeah, man, I'm going to stop doing it. Talk a little stuff for y'all. Please, you we know, appreciate it. Like to come in like this. The boxing matches and put the headset on for a minute. That's exactly. That's exactly what we're doing. Me and Kevin, oh, then we bring, we bringing the heat, baby. Let me tell y'all something. I'm going to say what I feel. I already said I'm going to say exactly what I feel. Whatever. If she shouldn't have that on, I'm going to say it. I'm just oh, saying. Oh, Lord. You going to say it? Why can't I? That ain't right. They know what commentators do. Oh, I'm interested. <laughs> that's, my, that's my criticism of all of y'all new, newbies. <gasps> y'all want to make friends with everybody. Oh. Mm -mm. We're gonna get off now because see now you <laughs> you don't you you don't, you, don't, you don't hit me now. It ain't got personal now, so you can talk about everybody else. Just can't talk, talk about T Lay. No, but I do appreciate that. This has been so much fun. Again, yeah. Pete, answer your phone. You and I need to get down. So I'm gonna let Pete come on probably in the next couple yeah. of days, and then he got to go back and talk about you. That's what I'm saying. I'm just saying. I'm going to make sure yeah. I ask him some direct questions about you. I'm kidding. But I uh, will have Pete on hopefully real, real soon. But I love you. Enjoy your Saturday. I'm not going to hold up any more of your time. T-Sippers, join us on Oh So Smooth Radio. We got about, what, about, uh, I don't know, about 30 more minutes on Oh So Smooth Radio. So join us with myself and Candyman. We're going to go ahead and ride this thing out for a Saturday. It's a beautiful Saturday. Before we end, before we go anywhere, I want to take this opportunity to definitely pray for I uh, keep in my thoughts and prayers to people that were affected by what was the first one called? Irma. Irma is coming now, but what was the one that that Harvey? Was it Harvey? Yeah. We want to pray for those folks affected. We want to make sure we keep them lifted up in our thoughts and our prayers. Um, and also for Irma that's coming up. Um, I know we know several people that's in Florida. I have reached out to Smoke. I know y'all know Smoke. Um, he said he's fine. So guys, we want to make sure we keep them lifted up in our prayers. Um, and we just pray for the, the whole, this whole thing. I, I don't know. You know, a lot of people think it's whatever, whatever people think it is. We just want to make sure that we're okay. And, uh, so we love you guys. Stay safe. Please, please, please stay safe. We love you guys. Until next time, we'll see you. Thank you, T. Pratt. It's been a ball. Thanks, love. All right. Bye. Sweetie. Bye. Bye, y'all. Enjoy your day. See you on Also Smooth Radio. Bye.